Washington, Harvey Blood and Viscera Lincolnferter certainly knew what he was talking about when he cried, War is heck! For moments later, he was blown to smithereens while making a run for it during the Battle of San Juan Capistrano. <laughs> Captain Lincolnferter was a hero. We can't all be heroes, but it's perfectly legal to have a hero. What have you got there, Rook? It's my Bullwinkle scrapbook, Bullwinkle. In here, I keep a record of your heroic feats. Come on now, Rocky. My feats aren't heroic. Big, maybe, but not heroic. Just the same, you're my hero, Bullwinkle. Don't you have a hero? Well, I'm only human. Of course I do. Who is it? Same one as you. Me. That may seem silly, but as Bullwinkle just said, it's only human to have a hero. That's right. Here I am only part human, and even I got hero. Boris, why are you all the time playing with your finger scar nose doll? I just told you, he's my hero. I don't got no namby pamby hero like Squirrel. I got real crummy, rotten, evil, unclean stinker, public enemy number one for hero. Oh, he's nice to have somebody you can look up to, darling. Skarnos has been my hero since the time he turned his own mother in for the reward. Yes, it figures that Boris Badenov would choose Finger Skarnos as his hero. For even as a baby, Skarnos had strong bad guy tendencies. Let's look at the record. Finger Skarnos was born just below the Lower East Side in a section called Hex Kitchen. And when Skarnos was only six weeks old... I'm telling you, Mama, the kid is a bad seed. He's a fink clear through. What kid's that, Papa? Our kid, Fingers, that's who. How can you say such things, Papa? The kid is only six weeks old. It's easy to say things like that. I just went in to kiss him goodnight and he tried to roll me. That was only the beginning. As Scarnose grew older, he took to stealing hubcaps with the cars still stuck to them. At the age of four, he hijacked a diaper truck, but they couldn't pin a thing on him. He learned to lie, cheat, steal, and make zip guns. And then one day, Skarnos fell in with a bad crowd. Go on, go on. Tell him how he graduated from reform school at the head of his class. He graduated from reform school at the head of his class. That's right. He was magna cum lousy. As everybody knew he would, Finger Skarnos grew from early hoodlumhood into full-grown gangsterhood. Today, he is a mature punk, Mr. Crime himself, kingpin of the underworld. And he is my very own hero. Please don't get so excited, darling. I want to be just like Skarnos when I grow up. You are grown up, Boris. Now quiet and listen. In a recent report at a fact-finding committee, Claire Luce Booth stated that... It's been common knowledge for years that Finger Skarnos is a dastardly criminal. Why hasn't he been flung into prison? Yes, why? Perhaps a DA can answer that. We can't get anything on them. You know, handcuffs, leg irons, things like that. Why not? We've never been able to get anybody to testify against him. You mean there's never been a witness against Finger Scarnos? Oh, yes. The East River's full of them. No, oh, then our hands are tied. So were the witnesses. Does this mean that Finger Scarnos will go on and on making millions through his criminal activities? Will there never be a witness brave enough or stupid enough to testify against Finger Scarnos? Be sure to learn the spine-chilling answer to that in our next episode episode entitled Bullwinkle Sneaks a Peak or There's Room in the River. If you should put them side by side, you would quickly see that there is a vast difference between Rocket J. Squirrel and Boris Badenov. Of course, there is a big difference. Squirrel has blue eyes. But the biggest difference is that Rocky, being true of heart, looks up to Bullwinkle as his hero. That's right, because I am trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and stupid. Bullwinkle is also full of integrity. I am not. I always tell the truth. Boris, on the other hand, looks up to the most successful and dastardly <laughs> criminal in the country as his hero, Fingers Scarnos. Right, because Scarnos is untrustworthy, disloyal, not helpful, unfriendly, rude, unkind, bad boy, sarpus, crooked, cowardly, dirty, and would sell his own mother for a nickel. Fingers Scarnos operates right out in the open. He and his criminal activities have been going on for years. And so far, the law has been unable to do anything about it. If I only had a witness to testify against Scarnos, he'd go up the river for 40, 50, maybe 60 days. Chief? We've got a witness. At last. Send him in immediately. Impossible. How come? We can't get the cement off his feet. Can this go on forever? You bet your blue booties it will. Nobody will ever put the finger on fingers. Is there no one who will testify against this blight on the nose of society? Is there not a hero who will step forward and bravely say, I will do it. You'll do what? I will go down to the store and pick up a bag of onions. What for? For this peanut butter pound cake I'm baking. The only way I can get it to weigh a pound is to put onions in it. 
Okay, but don't be gone too long, Bullwinkle. And with no further fooling around, Bullwinkle hurried out of the house and down the street toward the onion store. At the very same instant, Boris and Natasha hurried out of their hideout and ambled along until they finally came to rest in front of the big house on 92nd Street. Here we are, honey bun. This is the house of my hero, Skarnos. Some class, eh? Yes, darling, but why are we here? To get autograph. What else? And look, Natasha, a little something I bet you didn't know I got. What is it, sweetie? Yeast mold? No, his lack of hair from Skarnos. Hmm, he's still using that greasy kid stuff. By that time, it was 1.30, the exact time that Skarnos, surrounded by his trusted finks, always left the house to pull a job. It was then that a sickening turn of events took place. The big black getaway car pulled up in front of the local bank... <coughs> And Skarnos and his mob dashed inside to hold it up. The sickening part is that Bullwinkle's destination, the onion shop, was right next to the bank. The onion-seeking moose went into the onion shop and immediately came out carrying a bag of onions. For as we all know, it doesn't take long to pick up a bag of onions. Bullwinkle found himself directly in front of the bank just as the holdup went into full swing. My, the mosquitoes are out early this year. I had better take a cab, or I'll be a mass of angry red welts by the time I get home. Mistaking the getaway car for a taxi, the confused moose got inside, followed closely by Skarnos and his getaway-minded mob. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Skarnos did it again. Never mind trying to get the money back. Just find a witness. Watch for a black getaway car with a moose inside. It is believed the moose is a witness. Hokey smoke a moose? There's only one moose I know of around here, and that's Bullwinkle. Will Skarnos and his thugs notice that a moose is in the car with them? Will they realize that Bullwinkle is a witness? Don't let anything keep you from our next episode entitled <laughs> The Half-Shot Moose or Testify My Eye. No one can ever say that our last episode was a total loss, for as you remember, we learned beyond a doubt that Bullwinkle really takes the cake when it comes to baking a cake. What do you mean, were the onions? I thought you were baking a cake, Bullwinkle. Well, pity sakes, I am. The mess here in the kitchen should tell you that. You put onions in a cake. Doesn't everybody? No, and we're out of onions. You used the last one on your cornflakes this morning. Darn. Now I will have to trot down to the onion store and get some. I wish Bullwinkle would stop eating so many onions. They might hurt his stomach. Indeed, they might hurt the moose's stomach. In fact, going after those onions might hurt the entire moose to the extent that he is killed dead. For when Bullwinkle left the onion shop with a bag of Bermudas, he passed directly in front of the bank, which at the time was being severely robbed by none other than the notorious Finger Scarnos. Good heavens! I wonder why there are so many mosquitoes here in front of the bank. I will avoid their little stings by taking a cab home. Mistaking the getaway car in front of the bank for a taxi, Bullwinkle got inside, followed closely by Finger Scarnos and his getaway-minded mob. Calling all cars, Finger Scarnos just robbed the bank again. Be on the lookout for a getaway car with a confused moose in it. A getaway car with a confused what in it? Confused moose in it, that is all. Gee, that's got to be Bullwinkle, and he's in trouble. I gotta save him. With that, the plucky squirrel shot into the air to search the city in hopes of finding Bullwinkle in time. But time was rapidly running out, for in the speeding getaway car below... My, look at all of that money. What did you fellas do, rob a bank or something? <laughs> oh, a witness, eh? Let them have it, boys. In an instant, every gun in the gangster-infested car was being pointed at Bullwinkle and his bag of onions. Fortunately, it is difficult to hit even something big as a moose while riding in a speeding getaway car. But though Bullwinkle was left unpunctured, his bag of onions was shot to pieces, filling the car with onion juice. <laughs> <laughs> Just like with East Lynn, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Driving with tears in their eyes, the car spun out of control. At the corner of 42nd and Broadway, Bullwinkle was thrown clear and onto the pavement. Hokey smoke! A moose just fell out of that car down there! It must be Bullwinkle! Rocky zoomed to the side of his fallen friend and was a greatly relieved squirrel to find him unscratched. I may be unscratched, but I get a large bump on my antlers. That makes me a seven-pointer. Bullwinkle, do you know what happened? Well, of course I know what happened. Uh, what? You are a witness to one of Finger Scarno's crimes. I am? Yes, and now you can testify and send Scarno's to prison forever. See, that's right. But what about the overcoat? What overcoat? The cement overcoat Mr. Scarno's will put on me when he finds out. Will you let me worry about that? 
How comforting. At last, there is a witness against Fingers Carnos, and hot information like that is mighty hard to keep a secret. By that afternoon, every newspaper in the country carried the story. x X-ray, read all about the moose who's going to sing Scarnos into Sing Sing. Boy, I wouldn't want to be in that moose's shoes. The moose's wear shoes? Okay, so I wouldn't want to be in his hoofs. Who would? Nobody would. Anybody want to buy some moose hoofs cheap? Will Bullwinkle live long enough to be quizzed by the DA? Be with us next time for Whatever Happened to Joel Copperman? Or Get That Quiz Kid! Some people have all the luck. Unfortunately, however, Bullwinkle is not a people, and lucky he's not. Being the only witness to a crime committed by the deadly underworld kingpin Finger Scarnos, Bullwinkle has the dangerous duty of testifying against him. The fact that the moose is going to talk has made him the talk of the town. Tell us, moose, are you really going to testify against Finger Scarnos? Will you I... bet he is. You know what has happened to witnesses in the past, don't you? Will I... That won't stop Bullwinkle. Aren't you afraid? Will I... Of course not. You're not afraid, are you, Bullwinkle? Not on your life. There's not a cowardly bone in my body. Of course, there's a lot of cowardly moose meat covering those brave bones. Yes, for the moment, there is a real live witness against Finger Scarnos. This is what the DA's office has been waiting for. Gentlemen, with the moose's testimony, we can send Scarnos and his gang to prison for 90 or 100 years. Maybe even life. Are you sure? Word has it that the moose is somewhat on the stupid side. I understand that if you ask him what his RQ is, he says 2020. That makes no difference. All we need from the moose is two things. One, that he testify. And second? That he stays alive long enough to testify. You mugs all know why we are here? Right. right. You all know that the moose is going to snitch on me? Right. You all know that if I go up the river, I squeal and take you guys with me? Right. right. All right. Then will it be a hit or a miss? A, a hit. hit. Okay. I want that moose hit and hit hard. The hit was on. Next in the order of business was to find an out-of-town torpedo, a killer, someone to do the job. Scarnos himself placed a call to the torpedoes union. Hello? Let me talk to hands. Not there? Then let me talk to nails. Gone too, huh? How about feet? Ears? Elbows? Knees? Legs? Belly button? What the hey, isn't anybody there? Why is it you can never find a torpedo when you want one? You called? Who are you? Boris is bad enough at your service. Are you a torpedo? <laughs> Am I a torpedo? Yeah, tell him, Honeybun. He is a torpedo. Can you get the moose? Hey, can I get the moose? <laughs> tell him, Natasha. He can get the moose. See? I will kill moose until he's dead for free because you are my hero, Finger Scarnos, big boy. Okay, the job is yours, but you better not miss. Rest easy, boss baby. Moose is practically a memory right now. <laughs> Here we are, darling. Now what is plan to kill Moose? Doesn't witches disguise in basket apples give you a hint? Boris, you are going to pull Snow White caper on Moose. Good girl. Only I don't got old-fashioned poison apple. I got apple with bomb inside that will blow Moose to bits. Pure genius, darling. Here goes, Natasha. Stand back so you don't get pieces of blown-up Moose all over you. The postman always rings twice, so that must be he. Hey, you're not the postman. You were a sweet little old ugly lady. Hello, Moose. You like to buy apple? Buy apple? Yes, I'm trying to earn enough to send my mother-in-law to summer school. Only a nickel. Wait a minute. This apple has a worm in it. That's not a worm, that's a fuse. Oh, in that case, I'll take it. Here's your nickel. Fire in the hole, head for the hills. Will Bullwinkle really eat that loaded apple? Pity sakes, that's what I bought it for. Be sure to see our next episode entitled Doing the Big Apple or May I Have the Next Dance? Unfortunately, Bullwinkle is the only living moose who can testify against the notorious Finger Scarnos. But Boris Badanov has been hired to correct that. Right, to correct the part about moose living, that is. <laughs> and last time, you'll remember, it looked as though Boris was about to succeed in doing just that. He had come to the house disguised as an old witch selling apples. And this apple for moose is loaded. It's got big bomb inside. How about it, big boy? You want to buy apple for nickel? Are you sure this isn't a worm in the apple? I told you before, that's not worm, that's the fuse. Convinced that it wasn't a worm, Bullwinkle took the apple as Boris and Natasha dashed for cover in a nearby alley. Hurry, Honeybun. We will hide in garbage cans so that we won't get hurt by flying pieces of moose. Hey, what have you got there, Bullwinkle? An apple? Hold it, there's a worm in it. Oh, 
Oh, that's not a worm. The sweet little old ugly lady in the witch's disguise that sold it to me said it is a fuse. Oh, lady, fuse. Could be a worm, though. I can hear his little heart going tick, 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 tick. Hokey smoke, it's a bomb. Quick as a flash, the plucky squirrel plucked the apple away from Bullwinkle and shot out of the window. <laughs> Soaring high into the air, Rocky desperately searched for a place to get rid of the deadly explosive. Gosh, it sounds like it's getting ready to go off. I'll drop it into that garbage can in the alley where it can explode without doing any harm. Bombs away! Oh, boy. Fifty million garbage cans in city and squirrel drops bomb into ours. The odds against a thing like that must be fantastic, darling. Wasting no time, our heroes decided to throw Finger Scarnos off the track. They boarded a train and sped south for two hours. Then transferring to a bus, they doubled back and traveled north for an hour and a half. Leaving the bus, they paddled a canoe due east up a creek until noon. Then setting out on foot, they fought their way west through the back country. <sighs> Do you think we've lost Finger Scarnos, Bullwinkle? I don't know, but you certainly threw me off the track. Where are we? Way out in the country. I could tell that by the stickers in my socks. Let's sit down and rest. No, not yet, Bullwinkle. you got to hide where nobody will ever think to look for you. And I know just the place. Where's that? A mink farm. A mink farm? That little squirrel really knew what he was talking about. For who would ever think to look for a moose on a mink farm? So you fellas desire to work mink, eh? Yes, sir. All right, I'll give you $40 a week and all you can eat. The $40 a week sounds fine, but I don't desire to eat any minks if it's all the same to you. Knowing that Bullwinkle would now be safe until after the trial, Rocky and Bullwinkle went to work. For the next two weeks, they mended mink pens, rounded up stray minks, mixed mink meal, and even sat up nights with a mink who had an infected ear. Everything went along smoothly until the very day Bullwinkle was to testify when... In just a few hours, you can testify against Scar Nose and it'll be all over, Bullwinkle. Then we can... Hey, what was that? I don't know. Hokey smoke, Bullwinkle. It must be Finger Scar Nose's men. you got to hide so they won't find you. Hide where? Get into this empty mink pen and act like a mink. Uh, what does a mink act like? Well, you should know by now. Just jump up and down and squeak and look expensive. With Bullwinkle in the mink pen acting like a mink, Rocky ran for the barn where he sought cover in a mink meal barrel just as Burris arrived on the scene. Will Bullwinkle's mink act full, Burris? Or will the slight difference between a mink and a moose give him away? Be sure to watch next time for the act is over or the big mink is the fink. Realizing that Boris had been hired to kill Moose so that he would be unable to testify against Finger Scarnos, Rocky knew that he must hide Bullwinkle where he would be absolutely safe until after the trial. You want me to hide on a what, Rock? Mink farm. I was afraid that's what you said. Knowing a mink farm would be the last place anybody would ever think to look for a moose, our heroes signed on as mink hands at a local minkery. Everything went well until the very day of the trial when Boris and Natasha arrived at the farm. Hokey smoke! Bullwinkle, we gotta hide you! Shoving Bullwinkle into an empty mink pen, Rocky instructed him to act like a mink. Squeak, 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 squeak! Oh, squeak! Hiding in a mink meal barrel, Rocky waited in the darkness for two hours. Then, when all seemed quiet... They must be gone! Phew, that was a close one! But returning to the mink pen, he found that Bullwinkle was also gone. The mink pen is empty! What happened to Bullwinkle? Who's that? Why is this pen empty? Why, well, I sold the mink that was in it. Biggest son of a gun I ever saw. You put up quite a fight, too, but we finally got him into the sack. You... you sold him? Yep, to a little foreign feller in a black suit. Oh, no! Knowing that every second counted, Rocky flashed into the air and followed the tire tracks left by Boris's car in the road below. Before long, he found the car parked at a deserted sawmill and swooped down for a look through the window. Well, honey bun, at last I will keep Moose from testifying against my hero, Finger Scarnos. And you will get Moose Skin Babushka out of the deal at the same time. <laughs> oh, you are such a thoughtful little stinker, Boris, darling. Hokey smoke! Bowwinkle is due to testify right now! How will I ever save him and get him there in time? Time was rapidly running out, and with Bowwinkle only inches away from the cruel saw, Rocky struck upon a bold plan. Sneaking to the phone in the sawmill office, he placed a call. Hello, electric company! This is the sawmill calling. I just thought I'd tell you that I can't pay my electric bill. Everybody knows that when you don't pay your bill, they cut off your electricity. Hey, what happened to the electricity? Maybe we blew a fuse, darling. Come on, we fixed it so we can get back to cutting up moose. Rocky, baby, your timing is perfect. Never mind that. We gotta get you to that trial to testify. Right, let's go. Wait, 
There's one more thing I gotta do first. Stopping by the phone, Rocky made another call to the electric company. Electric company? This is the sawmill again. I just found out that I can pay my bill after all. Watch, Natasha. Here is a trick I learned in the army. You put penny in fuse box and you get the results right away. Please, Boris, this is no time to be showing off. With Boris busy elsewhere, Rocky and Bullwinkle set off on a dead run for the courthouse. But could they make it in time? Order! Order in the court. Please, Your Honor, can't we wait just a few more minutes? I'm afraid not. Since there is no witness to testify, I'll have to find Finger Scarnose, not... Wait! Who are you? I am the Mooseness. He means witness, Your Honor. Yes, and I am here to testify. He done it. Extra, extra, Moose's hero, Scar Nose and Gang go to Pokey. Read all about it. Yay! You did it, Bullwinkle. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of me, too, for living through the whole thing. And what about the viewers? We're proud of them, too, for living through the whole thing. Don't miss our next adventures of Rocket Chase World and Bullwinkle Moose. <laughs>